Just who is your book for? Well, we all write for what we call our ideal reader, a bit like your ideal client. So we need to create that avatar. Now we choose one reader because it's easier to write to them because it's almost as if we're speaking with them face to face and it makes a better book because we're creating this, this stronger connection. It's also more likely to sell because we know why the reader wants to buy the book. It is always about them. It's never about you and you are not your ideal reader. Now you may have been on this journey, but you are a completely different person right here, right now. You've done the work, you've had the experiences. So your book isn't for everybody. It's for a niche and it's a narrow niche, but it's a long, long way down. So there's lots of people will want to read your book and they are focused ideal readers. So what's in it for them? You know, why does your book matter to your reader? So get a picture of them in your mind's eye. What are you teaching them and how will they be changed as a result of reading your book? So think about this. My book will attract my ideal reader by teaching them and solving these problems, which will give me. So who is the ideal reader? What are you teaching them? What problems do you solve? And what are they going to get as a result of reading your book? So for now, grab yourself a piece of paper, draw a matchstick person, and start to map out some of the things that you believe make up your ideal reader. Don't think about anything other than just get some words out of your head and do this for about 10 minutes and then put it to one side. So what do you think? Now here's another exercise. What is the title of your book? Don't think about what it is. Just write the first thing that comes into your head. Now, what do you think drew them to your book? Is it the main title? Is it the subtitle? They're standing looking at a bookshelf and they draw your book out or they're on Amazon. Why did they buy your book? What's in it for them? Now I want you to start to bring them more alive while focusing on this book that you're going to put out into the world. So we know that we are not our ideal reader, but we have to meet our ideal reader at the beginning of their journey. So you now have to take yourself back in time. Who were you before you wrote this book? What was life like? What was going on? What did you want and what did you need to know? So when I wrote this book, Healing Osteoporosis Naturally, I was in massive fear. I wanted to know how to heal my bones naturally. I didn't want to take drugs, wasn't interested in the side effects. I just wanted to get my mindset right, get out of fear, create a healing plan, eat the right foods, take the right supplements. And I wanted to know that my bones were going to heal. I can remember those times as if it were yesterday. I don't think that is ever going to leave me. So take yourself back to that, that point because we need to know that our reader is feeling the same kind of stuff because we need to answer their questions. So it's always about what bothers them. We put ourselves in their shoes. Now, if you have a journal, what's going to be inside your journal? It's going to be your journey. So putting yourself back in, in, if you put, if you like, put yourself in their shoes, often we can go back to our journal and have a look at exactly what was going on. Remember, we have the knowledge and the experience. We've got the skills and the wisdom right now. But it is very, very important that you take yourself back to a time when you didn't know. So what didn't you know? If I think about the healing osteoporosis, I knew nothing. Well, I say I knew nothing. My mum had osteoporosis and she had chosen to take drugs. 
So I knew a little bit about it, but not very much. And I certainly didn't know how to heal naturally. So what didn't I know? How did you know that you didn't know? Well, I was lying there staring at the ceiling and I knew nothing. And I had to start searching. And I, in my journal, I made a list of like different keywords and phrases and things to look for because to start off with, I really, really didn't know what to look for, but I knew the outcome I wanted. I wanted to heal my bones naturally. I wanted a natural approach to reversing osteoporosis. And at the end of this very long journey that I went on, I now know masses. However, in terms of a book, you're only sharing a small amount of content. Otherwise, you're going to have a book that's got about six million pages. We know a lot of stuff. So the orange blob is what we know. Our book is a little subsection of that. So we're thinking about the reader's journey and it might be that we write several books, but we have to start the book somewhere and we have to end it somewhere. So we have to think of a milestone, something that the reader is going to achieve reading this particular book, knowing that we can't tell them everything. It's just impossible. And I believe that most people have more than one book in them. And you can always write another book. You know, it's part of your product development roadmap. But whichever book you're writing, first or last, it's always the best book for this reader right here, right now. It's always the right book with the right content. So when we're segmenting our reader, we, we break things down into different things. So geographic, demographic, psychological and sociographics. Now, Often when people think of geography, they think, well, you know, perhaps my readers are all in the English speaking world. I want you to think about this. They may be in the English speaking world, but there might be cultural aspects of where they're based geographically that have an impact on your book. So think about things like that. Think outside of the physical location that they are in. And then we've got things like, you know, the, the standard demographics. So whether they're male or female or their age, education, gender, race and, and stuff like that. And again, think outside of the box. You know, what are the implications of something like may, maybe age or gender on the content you're writing? So it's not just enough to say, oh, they're women over 45 who are going through the menopause. If you mix that up with the geography and you think about culture, what comes up for you? And then there's the things like lifestyle, personality traits, their values and interests. And then we want to really think about how they think and feel, you know, their buying behaviors, their behaviors when they're involved with the subject matter that you're writing about. So we need to think about stuff like that. So when you think about your ideal reader, what do all of the, when you, when you lay all of these aspects out, what do they all have in common? So you might start with one thing and end up with something else. And it's the grouping of all of this, this stuff that makes them unique, that makes them your ideal reader. And when you think about that, Think about how they're going to respond to your invitation to buy your book. Remember, what's in it for them? So part of this is really thinking about why they buy and how they buy. And this will make you think about the back blurb, the stuff that you write on the back of the book and the description you put on, put on Amazon and maybe the lead page you have on your website, why are they going to buy? So when you look at all their attributes, what are those key words and key phrases that are gonna turn them on, that are gonna really connect with them emotionally so that they will go and buy? You know, how do people buy? I, for example, 
I often buy in the middle of the night. So if I wake up and I can't sleep, I'll start writing in my journal. I'll start scribbling things. And all of a sudden I think, oh, I quite fancy reading a book on X, Y, Z. And I will buy things at three o'clock in the morning. How do they buy? What triggers that purchasing? So what do they want? Better health? Do they like really quality products? Do they have strong family values? Do they take their family away on adventure holidays? These are all extra things that give us some clues about our ideal reader. We want to know how they think. So focus on their emotions and their feelings. Think about their values. You know, think about your values when you come to buy something. If someone crosses your values in their marketing copy, you're not going to buy. So we walk a mile in our reader's shoes. And we start with this core group and then we can think further outside of that selection later on. So I want you to give your reader a life. Give them a name, give them a partner, give them children or animals or things like that. And we have this questionnaire so we can answer all of these questions. Please do it in a fun way. And we can create this, this reader archetype or avatar. Always think about what are the benefits they're going to get? What's the result they're going to get of, of reading your book? Now, who are they? What's the pain? What problem do you solve? What's the benefit and what results do they get? So go back to your matchstick man or women. Mind map around the scribble. And one of the things I do is when I finished, I will frame it and leave it where I can see it. So when I'm writing, I can keep looking at my rather interesting drawing and it always reminds me this is who I'm writing for. So go to the worksheet and start to write out some of these things. So we've done our scribble. Now what we're doing is we're bringing it together so that it makes some kind of sense to us. What are their values, their goals, their challenges? What is that result? So bring your scribble all together.